see why not everybody came out this morning. Looks like because they're just being lazy. Well, you may have noticed that we're down to just one full-grown turkey. Unfortunately, we lost our hen last week. There was a night when we came out at night to lock up the animals like we always do, and the tom and the hen were already always in their coop by the time we locked them up for the night. Most nights I look in just to double check, and for some reason that night I didn't, and I didn't realize that the hen had actually bedded down in some of the longer grass out here and was going to just sleep outside that night. The next morning we came out and unfortunately she had been attacked by, I would assume a raccoon and killed. And so now we're down to just our Tom turkey. Now the good news is we did hatch out a bunch of the hen's eggs this spring. And we do have nine more turkey babies that are about ready to come outside and live in this area as well. Now before I can move those baby turkeys out here, uh, this tom will become food for our family. That way when we move the babies out, there's no risk of him injuring them. A lot of the babies are also male turkeys, and I'm afraid that if we move them out with him, uh, it's going to cause a situation where he just kills them by trying to protect his area here. So he'll become food for our family since he doesn't have anybody to breed with now anyway and these nine new ones will become our new flock here on the homestead. We have some new young chickens that we're adding to our laying flock here. I wanna show them to you. They're still a little too young to join our flock. So we're raising them up in this chicken tractor and hope to introduce them soon. These six young chickens came from my friend Delyn, who hatches the most beautiful chickens. <laughs> A couple of these are Buff Orpington crosses. We have one small speckled Sussex. And the others I think are just a barnyard mix, but they're gonna be so pretty added to this flock. I can't wait for you guys to see the pigs. I know we've been so focused on the gardens lately. It's been a while since we showed you how well the pigs are doing. Let's go take a look. It's time for their breakfast. You guys are gonna be amazed at how well they're growing. Morning pigs. You guys hungry? you believe how good they are looking? I am excited about these pigs. Now, they still have quite a ways to go. We probably won't be processing these guys until sometime in October, but I am very excited with the way that they are growing. And the setup that we have for them, where we've opened up this big area so they have a you know, larger area to, to roam in, has just worked out great. I can already hear Mildred and Myrtle waiting for their feed. Let's walk over there and take a look at them. Good morning, girls. Good morning, beautiful girls. You guys ready for your breakfast? Myrtle always tries to eat it as it's actually falling out of the can. She just stands with her mouth open and hopes that some will just fall in her mouth.
but not least is you, Charlie. Somewhere between the middle of August and the beginning of September, Charlie will actually be moving in with Myrtle and Mildred so that we have baby pigs available for next spring. Once he moves into there, my plan is to expand his pen so he has a bigger area uh, after he's done breeding. But for now, he needs to stay here because I don't have anywhere to put him while I try to make his pen bigger. So I think that's gonna be a good plan. Uh, I think he'll like being over there with the girls anyway. So he can stay there for at least several months and then we'll move him back to his own pen. the duck side. Good morning, Doug. <laughs> and the new flock of chickens. My girl this morning. You having a good day so far? Hope sure is loving having this new huge pasture for her to graze in. She hasn't had to eat hay in a month or more now, which is great. The last paddock that we had her in just didn't provide nearly enough for her, but this now will provide all she needs for the entire summer. In September, she'll be due to calve. Then we can start milking again. Right now she's dried up. Yeah, you're such a sweet girl. That's what we want to talk to you guys about today is the barn behind me. This barn was originally the milking barn here on this farm, but it hasn't been milked in since the 1960s. So almost 60 years since that barn has been milked in. I think we're gonna be able to make it back into a great place to be able to milk Hope and maybe even one more dairy cow that we're gonna get down the road. Now those of you who have been watching us for a while know that just recently we expanded our homestead by purchasing some additional land. One of the awesome things about this new piece of land is this barn behind us. Now I grew up in Wisconsin, well Sarah grew up in Wisconsin too, <laughs> and these big old milking barns are everywhere in Wisconsin, but there's not a whole lot of them left here in Missouri. When we found this property, we knew that this barn was gonna give us so much potential, uh, ways to expand, new things to use it for, and so uh, it was really an awesome thing. This farm was started back in the 40s, and from that time up until about the mid-60s, the family that owned this farm used this dairy barn to milk up to 15 cows every day. But it was about the, in the mid 60s that they stopped doing that. So this barn has mainly been used for storage ever since then. It's got some great memories inside of there and we are so excited to create new memories for our farm with this barn. We wanna show you guys inside. Now I'll tell you that it needs some work but there is still some really cool stuff inside. The way that this barn originally worked is that this door over here on the right is where the cows would go in. Inside that door there's a setup for 15 milking stanchions and the stanchions are all still there. They've been there for over 50 years since this barn was originally made and used. In the middle 
is where you could go down the row and actually give feed to all of the cows as they're in the barn. And then the big door over here is a big sliding door that opens up. I would assume that that was originally used for equipment and things. And then the top of the barn has a huge hayloft. Let's go inside. I want to show you guys all of those things. So here we are inside the barn. Now, even though it needs some work, I think it is so cool in here. When the original owners sold us this farm, we told them to leave behind anything that didn't have, you know, real significant meaning to them. So that's what they did. And we told them that we would take care of cleaning everything out. So there are things in here that need to be gone through, uh, but I'm hoping a lot of it is actually ends up being useful things that we can use around the farm. Anyway, that's not really what this video is about. So let me show you kind of how the original setup of this barn was. Now, we're going to have to work around these freezers that are here. But actually, I think this is an awesome idea that the original owner of this place had. Whenever he had an old freezer that burned out or he could find one, maybe someone else was thrown away or whatever, it didn't work anymore, he would bring them home. And look what he did. He cut a hole in the top and put fine wire over them so that mice and other things couldn't get in. And that's actually what he used then to store feed in which I think is a great idea. Uh, I'm actually gonna keep these. I might move them to another area once we start working in this barn, but I think this is a really great way to store bags of feed and, bake, uh, and keep them safe from the mice and other things that might wanna get into them. So a great idea. These old guys just always had awesome ideas. I feel like sometimes I, maybe I was born at the wrong time. I feel like I would've gotten along great with all of these old guys from you know our past. Anyway, let's take a look at this barn. So you can see down this row here, this entire row is milking stanchions. Now some of them have broken over time, but a lot of them are still in working order once they're cleaned up. You can see this one here. This is the way it would have worked is that the cows, is that the cows would come in through that door that we just came through. They'd line up, they'd put their head through here to get their grain. This would close and then this would lock them into place so that they couldn't get back out. And this is set up again to be able to milk 15 cows down this row. Now another really awesome thing about this barn is that this entire barn is made out of wood that was originally here on this property. As the owner cleared this property back in the 1940s, all of this wood was milled out of the trees that he took down on this property and this entire barn was built from that wood. And I just think that's so cool that this wood has never left this piece of land, which is really awesome. One thing I like about this is that this barn also has a concrete floor in this section. You can see down here at the floor that where the cows would stand uh, is here. And then there's like a trough here. And that's so if they would go to the bathroom while they were being milked, it would end up in this trough. Now it looks like over time this has filled in. I'll have to clean this out. Uh, I just think that's a really neat setup. It's not something that you see real often anymore. And I'm excited to start getting to work to kind of bring it back to life. As we walk down the row here, you can see that there's still remnants of the original uh, vacuum line that they would have used for milking as well. I think about the time that they were milking here is when automatic milkers started to become a pretty common thing in the 50s and 60s. So obviously it looks like they were using machines to milk their cows. It's not all here and honestly because it sat too long I don't think it's anything that we'll be able to save so I'll probably end up taking that down. Uh, but I just think it's neat to be able to kind of take a step back in time and see all of this history. Another really cool thing is that there is still a bunch of the old uh, lumber here uh, that was harvested from this property. The original owner had a mill here on the property so he could mill his own wood. So I don't know if this is as old as the stuff that came that the barn was built out of, uh, but it definitely matches and it's from here on this property. So as I start restoring all of these stanchions and things, I'll actually be able to restore it with wood that was harvest, harvested from here as well and it'll all match and go back to its original shape. So I'm excited about that. Let's walk into the middle section so I can show you guys how that worked and how that setup was. Now this would have been where after the cows were in and locked into place, you would come in with your grain and you'd walk down the row and feed all of the cows as they were being milked. 
So you can see this long kind of hallway here. This again would be where you'd walk down with a grain bucket and feed all of the cows. Over here is where we just were and the cows would have their heads through these stanchions and this is like a big trough here in between the two sections. Now there is some work to be done in here as well. This part has a wooden floor and some of it has started to just cave in from you know being here over time. Uh, but I've looked at it and I don't think it's going to be hard to fix so I'm excited about that. There are things in here that need to be cleaned out as well. There's a lot of these old wood boxes that the original owner made and I don't know what he used them all for but I think they're going to be handy for something around the homestead for sure. So I've got a lot of those and I've got just a lot of things to sort through. Again, I don't know what I'm going to find until I start looking through things but I'm excited to do it. Now you can see here is a ladder. This is the ladder that actually goes up to the hayloft. Sarah can't climb up there because she's still recovering from surgery. So I'm going to take the camera up there and show you guys what it looks like. All right, I'll have Sarah hand me the camera now that I'm up here and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So just like the lower sections of this barn, this has mostly been used as storage for the last, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years and not being used to store hay in anymore. Since most farmers have switched to using the big round bales of hay, uh, most people aren't storing hay in hay lofts like this anymore and to be honest we won't either. There is still a lot of old lumber up here which will hopefully be useful for things around the homestead. But I really just wanted you guys to see how cool this is up here. You can see the door at the end down there is where an elevator would have brought the bales of hay up to the top of the loft and then someone would have been up here stacking them. There's actually a door on each end of the barn like that so you could bring the elevator to either side and actually uh, bring the bales of hay up here. So this would have stored a ton of hay back in its time and it's still structurally very sound up here. I don't feel uh, nervous at all about walking around up here. The barn itself is very structurally sound. So I just think it's really cool. I don't know what we'll do up here, uh, but you never know. It would be a perfect place for doing things like curing onions after we pick them or curing uh, garlic. I mean, all kinds of possibilities for up here. We'll just see what happens over time, but it's just a part of the barn that I'm really excited about. All right, the last section of this barn is this big middle section. Uh, I think this was primarily used probably for storing equipment and things. Now this big door here actually slides open. Uh, you can see the track there at the top, uh, but right now it's not working. Uh, I was able to open it one time but I'm afraid if I open it too many times, it's gonna to break to the point where I can't fix it. So because I can't get this door open today, I'm not gonna be able to show you guys inside this final section, but as soon as I get that door fixed, I guarantee that I'll be showing you inside there because there's some cool stuff in there as well. Now there are two lean-tos on the sides of this barn as well. This one over here is actually where we have our rabbits. Uh, all of our breeding does and our bucks are over here. And then this section here, uh, we've blocked off so that Hope has access to that front half of this section. Uh, that way she can get out of the sun and have a nice cool place to lay down. She actually spends a good part of her day in there when she's not out grazing. I think this barn has a lot of potential for us. What do you guys think? We hope you guys are just as excited as we are about resurrecting this old barn and putting it back to use and really creating some new memories for this barn with our family and our homestead. Now many of you may have grown up during the time when barns like this were being used all the time. What ideas do you have for us about how we could use this barn? Do you think what we showed you today was pretty accurate about how it was originally used? What kind of memories do you have about barns like this? We'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. You guys were so excited that you've come along with us on this journey. We can't wait for it to uh, unfold. We're not even sure yet how we're gonna use this property. We've been so blessed. If you're enjoying our videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And the best way that you can help us here is to share our videos on all your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.